So hello out there, it's another City Sports exclusive with me, Roman Osman. It's an invention of uh, the tracker today. We have the man everybody wants to hear from at this particular stage. Maxwell Kune, the former Ghana international and also a coach of uh, the Black Stars. He'll be my guest as we roll through the most outstanding players or Ghanaian players in Europe this particular season. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank Thomas. you also for making or honoring our invitation. Now let's start off with England. So it's been a very difficult season for a lot of the Ghanaian players in England. Starting off with um, Andrea Yu. He got injured on his first game after making a massive season. Now you've seen him play throughout, came to play for the Africa Cup of Nations. He's looking like the Andre of old. Have you been impressed with his overall impact at West Ham United? Yeah, thank you very much and uh, uh, good afternoon to your viewers too. I think uh, this is my first time on the show yeah. and uh, I'm quite impressed with what I've been seeing on, yeah. on TV. Yeah. I think uh, back to the question, Andre Ayo has been uh, one player that, that has uh, gradually you know, gotten to the top. Yeah. He's such a wonderful player and uh, during the AFCON uh, he wasn't all that fit but at least he did what he, he, he could do. And uh, after the tournament, he went back and, you know, was struggling in uh, West Ham. Yeah. But now he's getting back into shape. And I think uh, once he always have the desire, you can trust Ayo to always get to the top. Well, you made mention of desire. If you are looking for qualities of player, do you touch on desire or you touch on technique? Yes, as we've always been saying, you know, uh, talent is, is, is not everything. You can have the talent, but uh, talent without a desire, or if you can't really do that much. You can have the talent, you have to have that burning desire to carry you on, you know? So, and that is what uh, Andre has, that passion, he has it, and that is keeping him going. Well, he's been doing extremely well. He's got five goals already for West Ham United this particular season. It's not looking so, I mean, glittering like it was at Swansea City. But that's good. Let's get to another player who was playing very well before coming to the Africa Cup of Nations. Daniel Amate for Leicester City. He's been struggling ever since he returned from the Africa Cup of Nations. Do you believe that there's a war between club and country? Anytime players come to play for the Africa Cup of Nations? The first thing is he would start thinking like because they changed the manager, because with that manager at post, he was doing very, very well. Yeah. And when there's a change of leadership, a lot of things change. And so uh, he has to do all that he can to prove to the new manager that he's still the same person he used to be. Well, he's got to prove a lot to himself. Let's talk about a man that has definitely proven his mettle this season. Christian Achu. He's won the championship with Newcastle. Now, Achu was like a nomadic player. He was moving from club to club looking for consistency. But boy, oh boy, this season is the best you've seen him play, right? Exactly. Exactly. People have argued that oh, England is not good for Achu and, you know, but, you know, he has his own style of play. And uh, I think when the opportunity is given to him, yeah. he try as much as he can to grab it and grab it with both hands. Achu has been wonderful, especially coming to the national team. Even if he's not doing too good yeah. with his club, when he comes to the national team, it's a different ball game altogether. Yeah. So I'm not surprised he's doing uh, wonderfully well with uh, Newcastle. Is he one of the most technically gifted players you've trained? That Ghana have today. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you. Without well, that, let's talk about other three people. Jeffrey Schlopp is getting games at Crystal Palace. He's a Ghana international. Also, we can even even extend the argument and talk about Swansea City's now Jordan Ayew. He played an amazing game also over the weekend. There are players that you have your eyes on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, all these players, they form the nucleus of the, the, the Black Stars. And with Jordan, you know, sometimes they give him a role and that to tell you how dynamic the player is. Yeah. Maybe he's not playing at the favorite position that Ghanaians know him to be playing, but anytime he's shifted here or there, he goes there and, you know, he does so well. So uh, that means that we have quality on our side. And uh, I think we can only wish them well. Jordan, or this season, you know, has changed from club, yeah. club to yeah. show. And 
sometimes that to you know uh, derail you a bit yeah. but he has maintained his focus and he's concentrating to really do well and trying to get Swansea uh, uh, to maintain their status in the, in the, in the Premiership. So we, we only have to wish him well and, and make sure that he, he stays on top of his game. Well, Shlop didn't make the Africa Cup of Nations, but again, he's proven that he can be a multicellular player. You keep your eyes on him too. Shlop, I will not say he didn't make uh, to the African Cup of Nations. It was an, an excuse uh, on his part. He, he gave us that uh, opportunity to, to, to excuse him, not that he was dropped. You know, so uh, we always see him. You knew his quality. Of, you knew if he wanted to play, he would have been there. Yes, 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 yes. Because that time, like I said, players change clubs, and when players are in that transition, you only have to support them yeah. by agreeing to whatever yeah. proposal they may bring on board. Yeah. So, Do you watch Albert Aduma? He's doing well at Ast Aston Villa. Also, he's a Ghana international. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Albert Aduma has he been. Went to the World Cup yeah, yeah, yeah. Has been playing with us and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we like him so much. He is a typical winger. Uh, one of the typical, those days you call a typical number seven player. And that is Ad Albert Adma for you. All the crosses, all the falling back and going forward to cross balls. And he hardly cash in with the ball. And that's why I'm, I, I said he's a typical winger. He's good. And you know, Ghana has a lot of talent. You know? He has a chance under Chris here in Luxo. Let's get to Italy. At this particular turn, Koja Samoa is a player the national team has definitely missed since the 2014 World Cup. He's here to play, but he's doing very well at club level now. There, there are a lot of issues why he's not playing for the national team. But do you think he'll be back under Kwesi? No, on Koja's issue, uh, you know, I've been saying one thing. When a player is in difficulty, it's up to you, the manager, to think like the player is thinking. Yeah. Feel for him. And especially when you've been a player before, you can only feel how the guy is going through. So you can only agree with him and help him to come out and try and, and come back to be himself. Yeah. But yes, some more issues was very, very complicated. And I think uh, what uh, Ghana decided to do with him was the best thing I think uh, the Blasta did for him by like giving him uh, the chance. Has he ever hinted that he would return at a point in time? Kojo hasn't turned his back at Ghana before. Just that is a dialogue. You only have to talk and you know try to uh, take a decision that will help both Ghana and Kojo Samoa. Kojo has been very very disciplined and very very good player. Okay. There are some people that have played with you under the last two years. So, um, the free Aqua, he got sent off against Juventus just over the weekend. And of course, Emmanuel Ajmanbedu, some people say he's stagnated. He's been at Udinese for a long time. He's been a core member of the national team. Yeah, it's difficult to see if he is a starter of the national team at this point. Well, you know, at the level he's playing and playing every minute of uh, his, 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 uh, level his club Udinese, level yeah. and Udinese, so what else? It's a player is playing at this level. You can only uh, uh, pray for him to maintain his, his, his status in Udinese. He's such a wonderful player and uh, he is a fighter. He doesn't give up easily and that is what Ghanaians know him for, which is long range and always want to score at all costs. You saw his career grow up. At a point in time, or do you feel that he might have stagnated a bit? You see, players go to where they are most wanted. Okay. Huh. So me, I'm not surprised that he's, he's still with Edenese. Okay, if he's part of the team, there's one that they see as future of the team, Bologna's Goffred Donsa. A lot have been said about him. For those who monitor the Italian league, he's one player that has attracted a lot of interest. You think he's one that the national eye should start looking forward to? I like him personally. I, lo I like Donsa a lot. Yeah. With his style of play, I think he has something. The whole world is here to see. Uh, I think everything is just a matter of time. Um, Ghana, we have abundance of talents that we haven't even touched. Yeah. So it's just a matter of time. Like Sasolos, Alfred Duncan also so playing very well. Did you miss him at the Africa Cup of Nations? <laughs> he would have been. He would have made the team if he was fit, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
You are right. You yes, are right. Yes, as well as right. Alfred. Thank you. Those who should check his numbers out. He was injured at the beginning of the year, but he's back and playing very well. Last week, he got a goal also, and that was extremely important for his club at this stage. As we speak, we understand that clubs like AC Milan and Juventus are all keeping tabs on him. So like Coach said, the talent in this particular country, you, you cannot mention them. Roman Chipsa plays there, Isaac Kofi are all in Italy. But let's get to Spain at this particular point. Barack Castle, his Granada team just got relegated. But if there's one thing everybody wants to talk about Castle, it's his determination. Whenever he's on the pitch, he's fighting, right? Exactly. What makes him so unique? Well, Castle, you know, he's, uh, he's just a fighter. Yeah. That is one of his qualities. Yeah. And the second quality that guy has is well, his technique on passing. You know, he'll give you a ball that will be hardly to, 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 to miss. Yeah. You know, he's such a talent. He fights well. He has a very good eye for long balls and all that. So yeah. when you have such a talent, you know, he brings something on board. Yeah. You know, so, all so the players, they have their qualities. Okay. So at any point in time, we try to put them together and make sure that this one has this and this one bring this in on board and how we can gel all of them to, you know. That makes the team come Exactly. Well, if talking about gelling, Thomas Partey plays for Atletico Madrid. Now, this is the importance of playing for the national team. For those who did not know, Thomas Partey was actually on his way out of Atletico Madrid. He came to the Africa Cup of Nations, had a good tournament. And when he went back five days later, he had a new contract. How impressive was he in Gabon? Yeah, Pate has been a revelation, you know. Uh, and I think we have to uh, only, you know, tap his back and make sure that he doesn't... Uh, Do you think he needs to leave Atletico Madrid to fulfill his full potential? You know, it's two things. Maybe the manager is telling him, I want you here. Yeah. But we back home think he has to move on to get playing time and all that. But it's only him that can take that decision. You know, we wish that he can go to a smaller club and get that playing time that we all want to see. Yeah. But maybe his manager too is promising him, wait, this season, that and those players will move and you get the opportunity to also play and all that. So yeah. that may be, you know, uh, yeah, be in his good. head and uh, it's making things difficult or making uh, the decision difficult for him to take. Yeah. But hey, let's wait and see what goes on. Well, I've been prompted by my producer to let you talk about somebody in Italy, Suleiman Tari, and the racism issue that happened. Now, every footballer and ex-footballers are talking about Yaya Toure just tw tweeted that he's going to help Suleiman Tari in any fight to kick out racism in football. What did you make of it when you first heard that Montari was uh, on the pitch? I watch, I watch it and I wasn't happy with especially the referee at all. I think uh, we should all support Sule to kick... Uh, racism out of football yeah. because it's very very bad and when you feel that you may not know how it feels like yeah. but go out there and somebody will look down upon you and make you feel like an animal yeah. that is where you really feel the pain yeah. we all went through this at some stage in our career but that time you know the campaign wasn't that strong like today today, today yeah. what Chile did Everybody has to support him. There's no doubt about it. So we give uh, uh, Sule kudos. Well, there are a lot of Ghanaian players in France. So I'm going to knock it down to Lorient. Waris who's scoring. You guys bounce him out in Dubai from the Africa Cup of Nations. He went back. And the best way to speak as a footballer is to get on the pitch and do your job. And he went back there to do the same. But also, Wakash, you gave him a call up um, for the game against Egypt. And he's never looked back. But he's playing very well in France with Lorient. What have you made of their impact? at the club this season? I think they are doing well. And I think uh, the young Wakasu, mm. uh, like I, I said, he's also young, a big talent. You keep tabs me. on him, you monitor him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. We monitor him every week mm. with Waris in the same team. Yeah. And you know, Waris has spoken and spoken loud, you know. So I think that there's nothing wrong. You wouldn't be surprised that when the list for the game against Ethiopia will be out, he'll be Waris will be back in. <laughs> Why not? I think if you are scoring at this level, what else? So uh, we just have to pray that from now till we play, we get no injuries. 
And that is one thing that has really worried us. Well, you made mention of injuries. Barbara Man got a chronic knee injury. He's yet to start running. And also Samuel Tete, a lot of people don't know. He also had a similar injury when he went back to his club. These are massive concerns for you guys, for the national team. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's very bad. It's very, very bad. For a player to get to this level. And as someone John, we understand all you, still is battling in now. And for all you know that one injury will keep you out for six months. Yeah. So at least half of your season is gone. Is gone. Just like that. So we only have to pray for these guys. They work a lot. They work hard. Yeah. So when some of these things start creeping into their careers, we don't, we don't just want to see this. I'm sure it's a nightmare for players at this time to go through all those. And, but like they say, injuries are always part of the game. You've got to know how to deal with them. Coaches' time is very limited and we've got to knock it. But you monitor a lot of the Ghana Premier League. What have you made of it so, uh, so far this season? Yeah. yeah. Today I was at Cape Coast and I watched Dwarfs play Ash Gold and it was such a fantastic game. I, I think one of the best games I've watched this season. You know, the weather was we very see a lot of Coach, will we see a lot of the homeboys now being part of the national team? No, one thing is, you look at certain games and you see that the standard is low. Yeah. And you watch the, the next game and it's a different thing altogether. That is what I've realized this season. You go here to watch one match and the standard is so low that you think the Ghana League is, is, is dead. But you watch the next game and you see a different thing. Like the, the match uh, has beat Kotoko 3 1. was one of the best. Yes, the be yes. It's certainly one of the best I've seen has in Kotoko sell out. Yes, too. and yesterday I watched Dwarfs and uh, Ashgon, and the match was good. I watched Tema Youth and uh, uh, in Tema, I've forgotten. Yeah. That the, the, the level was Actually, very, very high. So I think uh, it's very good. Some of the boys are doing their best, but like I said, the talents we have, there are just too many. Yeah. So and everybody, no everybody, no everybody cannot come on board at the, at the same, same time. time. Agreed. Yeah, but it's just a matter of you, time. You know, one of the things Ghanaians were saying is that some of the, the local guys at least should be given a look in. And I'm saying this because this season in particular, you've seen a lot of games. I know personally you do. So if, if you know the quality level, is there the possibility that some of the local guys will then get a look in this time around? No, that is not in my hands. But I'm sure that uh, our senior coach, Wasia Pia, definitely will look at it. And when, any time he takes that decision, all we can do is to support him. Well, Kwasia Pia did make an intent. Now, he arrived on Friday. The next day, he was already at the stadium watching a lot of games. I won't let you go without talking about Kumasi Asante Kotoko, a club you coached and did very well with them. These days, I mean, they are setting all kinds of bad records. Kotoko have won like eight games without a win since the second of draft code. Even at a point in time, you were linked with going back to Kumasi and Santi Kotoko. But those things happen when there's a lot of pressure at Kotoko, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. it happens. I had a lot of calls in regards to this issue. And uh, for me, I think that uh, the frequent change of coaches has really brought the team to this level. I think it's not the best. Within one season, you be changing coaches and you know, firing people left and right. It's not the best. You have to keep and be confident in the leader, yeah. whoever the person may be. Yeah. Have faith in him and be patient. Yeah. You know, consistency is very, very important. It is. Yeah. So I think that is yeah, their biggest problem this season. Well, consistency is definitely going to be a problem. Um, I'm, I'm, I have to let coach go now. We are eating a lot into his time. But the beauty of coach is that it's rare to get him. So when you get him, you've got to squeeze everything out of it. So a message to Ghanaians. I'm sure a lot of Ghanaians are disappointed. 32 years without winning the Africa Cup of Nations. You've been with the team for a very long time. What kind of a message can you tell Ghanaians before you wrap up? Yeah. yeah. Ghanaians, thank you for supporting Ghana football. And we hope we want to just make things work. And uh, I believe that with the talents we have, we have to achieve something. But we can't do that without your support. So we only have to plead with Ghanaians that support Ghana football. Thank you very much. Well, so that was coach Maxwell Kunedo with his last word. He's promised that he's going to be a key feature on the tracker as the season goes, but we'll try as much as possible to expand. Who else to talk about Ghanaian players than the coaches themselves who manage the national team? It's been another special edition. Kudos to Philip for making this one happen. Yeah.